Well, breaking right now, radiation levels inside a Fukushima nuclear power plant damaged by that tsunami nearly six years ago is now at their highest point since that disaster. And experts believe melted fuel is leaking inside the plant almost daily, causing radiation levels high enough to kill a human being with just brief exposure. The latest readings now posing a serious challenge as officials prepare to dismantle the facility. Adam Housing, who covered that triple meltdown in Fukushima back in 2011, is following the story and he joins us live with more. Adam? Yeah, Jenna, hard to believe it's been nearly six years. And when we initially covered that, it was that great video that came in that really showed the destruction that Japan had to endure from the earthquake and the tsunami. But no one knew at the time the growing threat, which today continues to only get worse. That was the tsunami that took out the cooling system at Fukushima that basically caused the meltdown of three reactors that continues to this day. In fact, we're told the most recent numbers due to those meltdowns that nearly uh, 300 tons of radioactive water is dumped into the Pacific Ocean each and every day. The radiation levels, in fact, inside are now the highest level since 2011. Tokyo Electric Power Company, TEPCO, which is in charge of this area, reports that the radi radiation level has reached 530 sieverts per hour. The, to give you an example, it used to be 73 per hour. For people that don't know this stuff, let's put it into very simple terms. Four sieverts can kill a handful of people. Right now, 530 per hour are being detected there. According to scientists, that's unimaginable radiation levels. A robot was sent in. It only lasted an hour before radiation took it out, basically ruined it. It found a six-foot gaping hole inside that somehow has to be patched. Now, due to this high level of radiation, the company assures the public everything will be fine, but we've heard this information from Jap Japan before. There's been criticism even back six years ago when this first happened that Japan wasn't giving all the information out. Uh, we do know this. They say it will take at least $300 billion and four decades to finally fix this area. It's the worst since the 1986 Chernobyl disaster. Uh, again, also, we, as we get more numbers coming in, Jenna, uh, to keep this in mind as well, they say that right now there's still radiation being detected off the coast of California and Oregon. Now, it's very small, but the worry is with 300 tons of radioactive water going in every day to the Pacific, what is that doing to the Pacific Ocean, Jenna? Well, this is a, it's a crazy story, Adam. And I remember all your reporting. It was, you did such a great job there. You posted all the photos that you took and the time that you spent in Japan. Right. From your experience there on the ground and the precautions that you had to take simply as a journalist, I mean, what do you, what do you think about this? Well, it, you know, we only got within 90 miles because we had protective gear, but, you know, we didn't know what we were dealing with. And that was one of the biggest complaints. Even the U.S. military was complaining to the Japanese government at the time. They weren't getting the true numbers. And what some people are saying is, has it been this bad from the beginning? And how are you going to fix this six-foot hole? I mean, a robot only lasted an hour or so because the radiation level is so high. Uh, and we really don't all know, uh, all know also what this radioactive water is doing to the Pacific, Jenna. I think a lot of people are very concerned about that. They continue to monitor, monitor fish off of Japan. There's still areas not allowed to fish in. But that water, as we know, moves towards the west coast sure. of the U.S. I haven't thought about it for several years, and now certainly we are. We're going to have yeah. to follow up on this. Adam, thank you.